Namibia, one of the youngest countries in southern Africa, also has one of the highest unemployment rates in the world, calculated as high as 51%. To find out how the country has tried to address this problem, we sat down with a number of economists and policymakers. I think government, you know, it's difficult for a country like Namibia to create jobs because we are um, a huge country with a small population. Um, that doesn't really attract many foreign investors because there's no big market here. The majority of people are poor anyway, so they don't have much buying power. In the 1990s, the Namibian government thought that industrial manufacturing could be the remedy to its unemployment problem. In 1995, the Export Processing Zone Act was passed to promote foreign investment. The EPZ was now initiated in order to make, uh, to attract the investors to come to Namibia, whereby you import the raw material, say timber, from wherever you can find it, free of charge through the border, you bring it here, you convert that one, you process it to become a chair, for example, right? Finished product, then we sell this to other countries. So the purpose of that, the politics was that just to attract these foreign investors to come in. So you qualify to get an EPZ status if you are exporting at least 75% of your products to markets outside SACO. And SACO is Southern African Customs Union comprising of five countries, uh, including Namibia, but also Botswana, South Africa, Lesotho, and Swaziland. It became evident rather quickly that the Export Processing Zone program did not turn out as hoped. It was not creating enough jobs. We found that the problem was not just with the implementation of it, but with the policy itself. We are hoping to attract big companies to locate here. And we are about to succeed to attract big companies, South African connected companies, as South Africa become democratic too. So those who are trying to set up on the EPZ change. Why go to the second best if I can go to the best? So they went to South Africa. Therefore, I think it made the concept that we perceived very well not that very important. Because definitely there are countries, there are, there are companies who will use it. But as we thought of it to cash in on South Africa, that was taken away when South Africa became democratic. Some in the development community argued that the EPZ program failed to succeed in Namibia because it essentially was a cut and paste strategy from successful countries like Mauritius. Mauritius was the first. And often, if you're the first, you have an advantage. So they were the first in Africa. And they were actually early worldwide. So they set up their special economic zone. Uh, their, it's called um, Zone Franche, their uh, uh, economic processing zone, or the free zone legislation in 1970, 71, they launched it. So, and they were able to take advantage of uh, insecurity and changing the situation in Asia uh, to bring in Asian investors. And this was particularly uh, good for them in the 1980s. So a lot of Hong Kong investors were concerned about the impending uh, reunification of Hong Kong and the departure of the British. So they were nervous about that, and they were exploring other areas where they could move some of their investments, and Mauritius was a friendly place. They also had a very good strategy of using their Sino-Mauritians. They have a, about 3%, probably less now, of the population is of Chinese ancestry. And so they brought those people together on their uh, promotional tours, and they made uh, contacts in Hong Kong. They went to Taiwan, they went to Singapore, and they went to, around to the Chinese diaspora and try to promote investment. Malaysia is another place they've been going. So other countries coming in now, that's 40 years and more ago that they did that. So they got uh, in at the first rung of the ladder and then they moved up. The Namibian government failed to take into account what made export processing zones work in other countries and whether or not Namibia had these same conditions. 
the moment it looks a uh, copy and paste. Oh, the EP sets, yes, let's try that here. And they brought the Mauritian in to set up the EP set regime. Yeah. Ah, this the Chinese have done that and they have done the following. And then it's a, a copy and paste job and it's not tailored to, to the particular conditions and it's not tailored to moving away from the dictates of the market. I would even go a step further. Our plans since independence were not only cut and paste plans, they were coming from different planets. And they never tried to understand what made case A work in the context of Mauritius, case B work in the context of, let's say, South Korea, which they might have not chosen, but maybe Singapore, or some other country with a limited success story where you need to look into the local determinants and factors. Why were they able to turn it into a success story? Are these factors existing in Namibia? And then the answer is they didn't even bother to look into that. So it's not only a cut and paste, it's a completely ahistorical cut and play, paste. It lacks any preliminary analysis of the local conditions and it's just imposed on it. So it's an imposition of a cut and paste of the worst kind. After years of failure under the EPZ program, many have begun to advocate that focus be placed on more productive sectors of the economy. I think, um, you know, basically manufacturers look for more than just tax incentives when they decide to locate somewhere. And I think it's a reflection of how uncompetitive we are as an economy that we haven't managed to attract manufacturers that want to locate here and export to world markets. I think maybe the world market thing was too ambitious because there you're vying with the Mauritiuses and the Macaus and the others. Maybe we should have set ourselves up much more as a doorstep of South Africa and how do we sell into South Africa because they're our natural, our natural um, sort of market if you like. Um, you know, selling from Namibia to Europe and stuff is, is tough. We have to just focus on the different sectors of the economy that are um, productive. Um, but the problem with mining is that it's the backbone of the economy, but it's not very labor intensive anymore. So it doesn't produce uh, a lot of jobs. It produces some reasonably well paying jobs, but not a, a huge amount. Um, and also it's vulnerable to the com world commodity prices, etc. So uh, it can go up and down quite quickly. So we've had copper mines opening and then shutting and then opening and all depending on the copper price. So that's why we would be, you know, be better to also just focus on the second two sort of contributors to GDP, which is tourism and agriculture. And governments never really sorted out its act on terms of generating jobs through agriculture. The Namibian Export Processing Zone program is currently under review by the government and third-party development agencies. If the EPZ program is to stay a major feature of the Namibian economy, there must be drastic changes to its structure and implementation.